CJD time is 109. Coming up this afternoon, all kinds of stuff for you today. Gabby Dufrancier will be with us as she is every Saturday. Going to talk about your pets and also how to keep them safe on Halloween because apparently they freak out. That's right. It's not just little kids who freak out on Halloween, but uh, it can be a bit of a challenge for your pets as well. Uh, after 3 o'clock, we're going to take a look into the life of an author, a prize-winning author, and uh, and find out, I mean, what is it inside someone that just pushes them to do that against all logic against him because so few authors are commercially successful uh so we'll take a look at that after three after two o'clock a uh, tragic death less than a, a couple of weeks ago of jamie hubley 15 year old teen who was bullied he was depressed he committed suicide and we're going to take a look at this issue of uh, homophobic bullying because gay kids uh, commit suicide in much higher numbers than uh, than sort of the their cohorts and the rest of the population. So we'll find out what are we doing wrong, what can we do about it. Uh, after one thirty, we're going to be joined by a graffiti artist. You know, I've heard a lot of people complaining, oh, darn graffiti people. Uh, cities in the West Island have gotten together. They've actually asked the Justice Minister to send people who commit art uh, to jail. Imagine that. Instead of, uh, they feel the fines are too much. So we'll be speaking with a... Um, a graffiti artist to get the artist's point of view. And right now, though, who doesn't love a good glass of wine? And who doesn't love a bargain? So you put the two of them together and you've got heaven in a fluted glass. Red, white, rosé, sparkling. The choice is mind-boggling for you and I, perhaps, but not for our guest, wine goddess. Yes, I have. I've elevated you. <laughs> Natalie McLean. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie's traveled the world on a quest to find the world's best bargain wines and has documented this in her new book, Unquenchable. We loved... We loved your last book. Thank you. Uh, so you call this a tipsy quest for the world's best bargain wines? Absolutely. Want to signal right up front, this isn't a serious, dry, so to speak, wine tome. This We're going to have fun with this. Now, because you're known for that. I mean, you're known for not being a poncy, you know, wine critic with talking about things that have undertones of buffalo chips and that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'd bore myself if I if I did that. I think, you know, the... the the, the great part about wine is that it's a social beverage. It brings us together around the table. You enjoy it with good food and friends. It, to me, it's not about swirling and sniffing and getting that, you know, those buffalo chips under arcs of tar and cher cherries. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the last time you were here, I asked, actually asked Natalie for, uh, 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 remember I asked you for like a phrase that oh, I yes. could say yeah. to, to poncy wine critics? Have you been using it? No, I forgot what it okay. was. <laughs> The buffalo chips might not work. No, I yeah. think someone might might notice buffalo chips. Yeah, but you could try delicate uh, dew dappled violets under an arc of well, let's use the tar. Um, probably springtime. Delicate dew dappled violets. Yes, I under forget the, what I just said. <laughs> yeah, under an arc of tar in the springtime. An arc, an arc of, of tar. tar. In the springtime. Yeah. All totally I can think of is when they, when they roof next door. <laughs> <laughs> there might be some flowers growing there. <laughs> All right. That's good. And See, the point is just to say it with conviction there. And everybody will say, oh, yeah, I'm uh, getting that too. Yeah. I, you know what? I think most people, I, I have deeply suspicious that most people have no clue what they're talking about when it comes to wine. So. It is very subjective. So what, uh, what caused you... To go on this tipsy quest? Well, you know, I was debating between um, a book about the world's best wines or bargain wines. And I thought, well, if I write about the world's best wines, they're going to be expensive and all seven of us could get together for a book club. And everyone sometime. will hate you, too. You know <laughs> exactly. that. We hate people who spend lots of money on wine. Yeah. And, you know, I, I mean, I live on a budget. And when I'm buying wine for personal consumption versus just tasting, I, I'm looking at wines in that 10 to $17 range, wines that taste twice as expensive as they cost. I think everybody loves a bargain, as you said, but we also don't want to give up good taste. And I think there is a sweet spot in that price range today where you can get some terrific bottles. Now, can you get terrific bottles here in Canada where the SAQ bloats the price phenomenally, or do you have to go to the countries of origin? No, you can still get them here. Really? So, yeah, I find that, you know, under $10, there there are a few, but not a lot. Uh, I was going to say, under yeah. 10 bucks. No, you're that looking gets kind of salad scary. dressing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> right, and then, but I do find there's not a linear relationship, meaning, like, once you get over 30 $40, 
price and quality start to drift away from each other, what you're paying for then are the intangibles like a critic score or rarity or collectability. But in that range of 10 to 15 or $17, I think you can get some great bottles because we've got so much competition now in the liquor stores. We've got new countries, new producers. Technology is bringing costs down. Winemakers know more than ever what to do with the grapes that work best in their regions. Okay, so coming up, we want to hear some of your stories. All right. I understand the woman actually brought herself to milk a goat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, you know, I, I thought I don't want to have two talking heads throughout the book where I meet a winemaker and we go, -na 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 -na, you know. And so you had to milk a goat. Uh, well, it broke up the dialogue. Well, coming up, we're going to find out how one introduces oneself to a goat before one milks the aforementioned beast. CJD time is 115. <laughs> You're listening to Saturday in Montreal with Kim Fraser on CJAD 800. CJD Time is 118. Our guest, Natalie McLean. She uh, was here for her best-selling book, Red, White, and Drunk All Over. And uh, there is a theme. <laughs> She's back. She's been on a quest to find the world's best bargain wines. The book is called Unquenchable. It's a tipsy quest for the, well, for the world's best bargain wines. And uh, before we check traffic we we're talking about you know some of the things that uh, that you did as you were going around the world looking for these wines and one of them was you milked a goat yes well in south africa there's a winemaker you may have heard of his wines he uh, does a play off of french labels so instead of um goat rot coat roti he does goat roti or goats do roam instead okay. of coat uh, de that, Rhone. that, I've, that I've, I've heard of yes he does the goat father which is an Italian blend and and he has this herd of goats and he makes his own goat cheese so he wanted to give me the full farm experience so over I went to his flock and we picked out a nice calm looking goat who looked like she would cooperate and I milked her and then we did a pairing of wine and goat cheese so it all did fit together it wasn't totally gratuitous no well I yeah. can't imagine you sort of going oh I think I'll milk a goat today yeah, exactly. so I, what do you do do you go you introduce yourself to the goat. Say, Hi, yeah, I'm yeah. Natalie. She was very calm. She was a lot Warm calmer. your hands under your armpits so yeah. they're not all cold. Exactly. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, but she had a nice warm tummy. And anyway, no, but uh, it, it was fun. I, it took me a while to get the hang What's of it. What's it like? So it must, is it soft and, and yeah. fuzzy? Yeah, it is. It's it, it's warm. It's actually, she smells like a meadow. It, and so did the milk. It was kind of neat to actually smell the milk, the you know, fresh, <laughs> fresh from the farm. So, uh, and I, I, uh, I asked where the goat go after, you know, they have a long, happy life. And he goes, we don't talk about that. Oh, not in front of the goats, <laughs> no, we don't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> she was starting to look weary. Uh, uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I wanted to, so where are some of the, the places that you went and why did you choose them? Well, each chapter, there are eight of them, is a different region, a different country. And I was looking for the regions that deliver great value and their wines are inexpensive. And, and they're inexpensive for different reasons. So I started off with Australia and Shiraz, which, you know, made a big impact, uh, you know, even five, five, seven years ago. But the wines still offer terrific value. But then as I moved around uh, the planet, I was looking at different regions for different reasons. So Argentina, Malbecs are, are the latest sensation. Yeah. So, you know, these are fleshy red wines. The reason why Argentina and Australia um, can produce terrific bargain wines is that they've got consistently good weather year after year, so they're not fighting a cool climate, mold, mildew, rot like they would in France. Um, they, In Argentina in particular, the labor costs are low, the land cost is low, so they can produce wines in that 12 to 13 $14 range that, that do taste twice as expensive as they cost. So that was one of the... Uh, one of okay, the you have to give us a recommendation. Oh, um, sure. Some Argentinian wines we can get here. Absolutely. Because I'm just sitting here thinking 12 to 13 dollars for yes. a bottle of wine yes I, I would just immediately just sort of boogie on by going yeah. oh yeah well yeah. whatever yeah, exactly <laughs> well look for katina how do you spell that c-a-t-e-n-a -E katina okay. alamos a-l-a-m-o-s um let's see now um i went to norton n-o-r-t-o-n 
Big one is Fusion, still popular here in uh, Quebec, F-U-S-I-A-N, and that's the Zuccardi family. They also make other wines. Okay. But they're all profiled in the chapter, and I've also reviewed them on my website. Oh, let's talk about the website. <laughs> Segway. <laughs> no, no I, have, I have reviewed all, all the wines. What I did, because, um, you know, Doubleday Random House isn't willing to publish my book every month, and wines change in the liquor store every month, I think it is a neat combination of the old world of print and the book and the website to keep updating those wines as they come into the liquor store. So it's NatalieMcLean.com. No yes. H, but an A in McLean. That's right. NatalieMcLean.com. And do you still do Nat's Decants, the blog? Uh, yeah, it's on there too. And we're doing a video blogging now, like wine tasting. It's a, it's a lot of fun. And you can create a custom shopping list and just pick your bottles and then go to the store or do it on your mobile app. Because it is a super, super, super fun website. Thank it you. It really is not... It's not a poncy one. <laughs> you know, it's fun. And, and, I mean, you do theme things, too. I remember we had you on. Uh, the girls, we brought the girls in. We all got a little tipsy at Valentine's Day. Yeah, remember was fun. You recommended a bunch of things for us to try. Exactly. That went well with chocolate. Yes. Yeah, food and wine pairing, I love that. I think a lot of people look for wine based on what they're going to eat. Well, and so you can search that way as well. You can start with the food and then get the wine recommendations. Okay, we're having, <laughs> we're having rib steak tonight. Oh, yum. And I think I might make a Diane sauce. So we're going to ask. What's good with rib steak and what's good with Diane sauce? Because it's ribby and creamy. And first of all, it's just the best thing you've ever eaten. Mm, it sounds so good. That Katina Malbec would work beautifully. Would it? Right. Or an Australian Shiraz. All right. Would also work nicely, say from Wolf Blast or Penfolds. Okay, let's talk when we come back about some of the other regions. And I want to ask you about uh, screw caps. Sure. Because everyone's like, I brought a wine with a screw cap. And it was like 30 some odd dollars, oh, yeah. you know, and I researched and people looked at me <laughs> like I'd shown up wearing my underwear on the outside of my pants. <laughs> CJD time is 124. This is Saturday in Montreal with Kim Fraser on CJAD 800. CJAD time is 126. We're speaking with Natalie McLean. Her book, her second book, Unquenchable. It's a tipsy quest for the world's best bargain wines. Natalie, you're going to be at Appetite for Books at 3 o'clock today. That's right. We're going to taste some wines there. It's a wonderful little bookstore. You've been I there? I love that place. Isn't it it great? is so cool. What they do is it's a book, it's a, a, a cookbook store, yeah. but they also do cooking demonstrations. They oh, offer yes. cooking classes uh, it's it's so nice it's in westmount and uh, you uh we're going to do wine tasting i'm going to read from the book and then we're going to taste more wine then i'm going to read from the book and <laughs> get, a, get the idea <laughs> okay so you were talking about um argentina australia yes. uh saying that uh, they have some some great wines the other thing that you were mentioning is that there are some reasonable wines because areas are trying to overcome a little bad press that they've had yes so who can we profit from whom's misery can we profit <laughs> Natalie. <laughs> I like your approach. <laughs> uh, if we look at Germany, now this is still a couple decades ago, Germany had a Riesling, uh, a Riesling, a reason for having a bit of a dreary reputation. It's white wines, especially those Rieslings, were kind of syrupy sweet, and a lot of us had them when we were much younger, maybe behind a high school portable, maybe <laughs> older than that, but uh, anyway. The very baby duck of wines. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but these days, um, German Rieslings are made in a variety of styles, all all the way from bone dry, and you still can get sweet or uh, dessert style wines, but people don't realize just what a bargain they are and that they can be absolutely dry and they're terrific with food. Plus, you can't read the labels, so that always keeps prices down, too. <laughs> well, I always thought with the, with the expensive ones, they should actually leave the price tags on them. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It might help. <laughs> okay, let's segue into screw caps. Oh, sure. Um, I, so I was down at the SAQ, and I was going to kind of, you know, a foodie's house for dinner, and I asked them for a bottle of wine, um, and I was advised to, you know, pick up a sign, and it had a screw cap on it. And I sort of looked at it dubiously, but I said, no, this is a fabulous bottle of wine. Bring it. Your friends will absolutely love it so i brought it and i swear there it was like you know when you hand someone a child with a dirty diaper right <laughs> there's a, 
Oh, how nice. Right. <laughs> Thank you. And it was whisked to the kitchen. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, and, and I thought, I thought uh, oh, wow. So is there still a kind of a snob factor to screw, to, screw top wines? There is. Just uh, that goes back again a couple decades when it, uh, decades ago when all the screw cap wines pretty much were plonk. But these days, uh, you know, quite good wines and quite expensive wines um, are closed under a screw cap. New Zealand, for example, has one main bottling facility and all of the wineries pretty much decided to go with the screw cap. So you'll find almost all New Zealand wines under screw cap and they will range up to over a hundred dollars or whatever. So screw cap doesn't mean plonk anymore. And I think it's a wonderful way to go. It's easy and fast to get into and sometimes that's important. Yes. Yes. And you don't need any special uh, equipment to open a bottle of wine. I know my kids always take our... our, uh, our <laughs> <laughs> the corkscrew? The corkscrews. They do. They take yeah. them because you can open beer bottles with oh. them. And it's like you heathen swan. <laughs> Natalie, thanks so much for coming in. As always, it is a total treat to have you here. Natalie McLean, the website nataliemclean.com. The book is called Unquenchable. It's a tipsy quest for the world's best bargain wines. And it's like as fun as she is, that's how much fun the book is. Okay, so what you just heard? Yeah, put that on steroids. <laughs> and she's going to be at Appetite for Books today at 3 o'clock. There's still, uh, There's still a couple a few of tickets spots. Left, so Absolutely. Join us. Yeah, yeah, go down and get to meet her in person. She's a boatload of fun. <laughs> Thanks, Kim.